Hi, I'm Rob. And I'm Rob. And this is Ask Rob and Rob. Welcome back to another episode of Ask Rob and Rob, the show where you ask questions and we give you answers. Today, no surprises in store. We're going to be doing exactly the same as we always do and leaving you walking away in about five to ten minutes time, that little bit wiser when it comes to property. Got questions in today from Tom and Danny. We'll hear those just after a quick recap of how you can get your own question into us. You have two options to get involved. First of all, you can call in on 013 808 0035. That's 013 808 0035. Or you can go via our website, on your mobile or on your desktop, the choice is yours, via propertyhub.net forward slash ask. That's exactly what Tom has done. Hey, Rob and Rob, it's Tom from Edinburgh, and I've got a quick question for you. I've joined the family business, and we have 200 grand sat in a current account, and we're looking for investments and things to do with it. I'm just wondering if you were in this position What properties would you invest in? uh, How many and whereabouts? And if you've got any uh, advice, I'd be much appreciated. Thanks, Barry. Tom, this is an easy one. Send it over to me and I'll look. No, I'm joking. Tom, you're in a fantastic position. But that fantastic position can paralyze some people because you've got this sum of money and you don't want to mess things up. So I'm really pleased that you've got in touch with the show so we can start to craft your thinking so you can make good decisions. Now, the worst thing you can be doing right now is looking at investments. I know it sounds a bit crazy. You can look for educational purposes, but don't be looking to pull the trigger yet. Because what you need to be doing is getting very clear what you want from this whole process. Now, Rob and I talk about goal setting a lot. And it's not because we're running out of topics to talk about. It's because it's so important. And we've seen the impact it's made on our own lives. But more importantly, hundreds and if not thousands of you Goal setting is key to being a successful property investor because you need to know what success looks like to be successful. So the first thing you need to be doing, Tom, is really thinking about what success looks like for you and they are your goals. So what time frames are you putting to this endeavor? You know, do you want to be investing for property for the rest of your life or is this a five year project? You need to decide. You also need to look at your financial goal. And then you need to marry the two up, the time frame and the financial goal, plus one other thing, your life, and see if they all add up. Because you may have very ambitious goals, you may have the funds to do it, but if your lifestyle is super busy and you're not one for taking on big risks, then you may need to adjust your timescale. Conversely, though, I sometimes speak to people who are in a great position Their life allows them to push on, but they're being really conservative with their goals and they need to push themselves. So start to write down your goals. And I think writing down is a really good way to help you commit to these things and treat the process seriously. Start to write down your goals, what you want from this, the timeframes you're prepared to give to it, and also a quick assessment of where you are in life right now. And once you've done that, share it with some more experienced property investors and get an opinion. Is this realistic? But don't just share it with one person. Share it with a few people. Go to a Property Hub meetup or any other meetup where you've got friendly property investors and get opinions from people who've been down that road, who've travelled that path that you want to go down and get advice on your goals. Just be wary, though, if you go to those meetups, if they start to ignore the goals conversation and get into investments because you're not ready for that yet. At this point, you don't know what a good investment looks like. But by setting out your goals, you will do. Okay, let's listen to our second question today. This one is from Danny. Hi, Rob and Rob. Danny here from Kent. Just like to say, firstly, thanks very much for everything you do, you put together. Uh, I feel like I've learned a lot in the past couple of months that I've been paying attention to the Property Hub. My question is, what's your opinion on mentoring, more specifically, the prices, uh, what should be involved, what to look out for in, in terms of the mentoring, like when they offer the package, how should it be structured? How do you get the most out of that as the client to that mentor? Thank you, Danny. Good question, and one that comes up all the time. Mentoring can be really valuable. Why wouldn't you model somebody who's been there and done it before if you can do? But in property in particular, probably in other industries as well, but property is the one that we're familiar with. There are lots of people offering mentoring where the value that they're offering might not be in line with what they're charging. So how do you know the difference? It's a really good question. Firstly, I'd say that there are probably two different types of mentoring that you could be looking out for. One of them is 
for a very specific strategy. So if somebody has done exactly what you want to do, the, the particular strategy within property, they've had great success doing it, and they're willing to share the knowledge that they've gained and help you get there faster than they did because you don't have to make all the mistakes along the way, then that's one form of mentoring. Another is a bit more general. So maybe you're just starting out doing something fairly standard in property, but you just want somebody to sense check things with and make sure that you don't make any horrendous mistakes. Both are valid forms of mentoring. As I've touched on, you do sometimes find though that people offer mentoring services because they are very profitable things to do. People charge huge amounts of money and they actually end up making a lot more money from that than they do investing in property. So they might end up maybe inflating what they've done in property to help get new mentees in the door. So that leads us to a few things that you should do to make sure that you are finding what's right for you or indeed if mentoring is right for you at all. The first is to be really clear on what you want. It comes back to the goals conversation. If you are clear about what you want, it might mean that a lot of things clear themselves up and you don't need to go to someone else for answers, or it does at least mean that you can go to the right person for an answer because you know what it is you're trying to do, who it is that you're trying to model. The next thing is when you do find someone, really get to grips with what their actual experience is. Don't just take it at face value if they say in a Facebook post or something, oh yeah, and I've got 20 rent to rent units and they're doing brilliantly. Get to the truth. Speak to other people who've worked with them. Go into companies' house records if you can. Do whatever you need to do to make sure that they really have done what they claim to do so they can help you do it as well. And the third thing is the structure. I personally would not pay a big upfront fee for mentoring. You see programs advertised where they're charging you a five-figure amount up front for a year of mentoring. And it's just human nature that if you pay all that up front, then that means that they're not going to be as invested in providing what they've said they would as if you were paying monthly. So every single month, they had to give you something of value. So you kept on going. You even get out and out scams, where you pay all the money out, they promise that you're going to do all these wonderful things. And they just don't materialize or they are a very, very watered down version of what they're meant to be. So I would look at the payment structure and make sure that you get very, very clear on what it is that they're supposed to be delivering for that money. And of course, we say this every time we talk about mentoring, but I think it really bears repeating. You don't necessarily need it. There seems to be a general impression that to succeed in property, you need to have a mentor, especially one that you pay for. People seem to think that it's the only way you can be successful in property. That's just not true. You can do. It could be valuable. It could save you time if the right person comes along and it's what you need at that point. But it's absolutely not mandatory. There is so much that you can learn on your own, so much that you can learn for free. It's certainly not something that you have to do. Now, when talking about mentoring, there's a lot of overlap with talking about property investment courses. When you're choosing a course to take, if you need to take a course, which you don't necessarily, you need to be looking at quite similar considerations in terms of working out which is going to be right for you and if you're going to get value from it. And on our new YouTube channel, we've put together a video called Are Property Investment Courses Worth It? that talk you through all those factors. So if you're interested in learning about courses or about mentoring, it's probably worth you checking out that video. So if you go to youtube.com and search for Property Hub, you'll be able to find that video and we'll link to it directly in the show notes as well. Thank you, Tom and Danny. Two great questions there. And I'm sure we'll have two great questions next week. Otherwise, it's going to be really awkward. We'll be back, of course, on Thursday with the main podcast. So until those two wonderful events occur, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.